Hello, hello, all you beautiful and intelligent people. You see, I know my audience. You guys are smart, driven, and creative. I mean, why else would you be watching these videos? And I have no doubt that if you want to start a business, you most definitely could. But what do all businesses need? Money, a plan, sure, those are all important things. But you also need a logo. Now, I can't help with any of the other stuff, but today I can help you guys learn how to create custom AI logos for whatever business you're in using Compute Grid, Comfy UI, and Stable Diffusion. The first thing we need to do is go to All Instances, select the machine instance you want to use, and then click Start Instance. And while we wait, I'm sure you beautiful, smart people are already subscribed, but if you wouldn't mind just real quick double checking for me, I would greatly appreciate it. And now their instance has started, normally we just go over to the SDXL tab and then click Launch SDXL. But the model we'll be using today to create our logos is actually from a site called Civit AI. And so we'll need to SSH into our instance and make sure we add it to the appropriate file folder. And now for those unfamiliar with SSH in the terminal, I will be here as your faithful guide to walk you through the steps. First, of course, though, we need our model. Let's go over to Civit AI. We'll be using the logo.redmin model, which is a logo lore for SDXL. And oh, don't worry, I'll go ahead and include the link for you guys in the description below, along with all the other SSH steps. Now that we're here, though, all we need to do is go over to this download button, but instead of downloading it, we're gonna go ahead and this right click, copy link address. We're doing this because we don't want to install it on our personal machine, but the instance machine itself. I also want to point out that this file is going to be a LoRa type. This is important information for later. And then before we leave this page, just one more thing. I want to make sure you guys are all aware, in case you guys didn't know, but you're actually able to go ahead and download the Comfy UI PNGs. And when these PNGs are dragged in, they'll populate the workflow that was used to create them. I will not be using the pre-made workflows, so I prefer to show you all how to create the workflow node by node. But I feel like it would be a disservice to you all if I had let you guys know that. On the right hand side, we also have the generation data, which includes the prompt that was used, negative prompt, and then how many steps, sampler, etc, etc. This can also be seen if you just go ahead and click the information icon on the bottom right hand corner of the images. Anyway though, let's go back to our instance. The first thing we need to do is go ahead and pull up our terminal. And then we actually need to go ahead and get inside of our instance to access it, and we're doing that via SSH. We're gonna go ahead and actually just use this exact, this exact command here, so we can just copy it over, like so. We're gonna go ahead and respond with yes, and then we're gonna type in our randomly generate SSH password. Perfect. We know we're inside of our instance now, quit from Alyssa at Alyssa-HP to CG at CG-instance. And I did go ahead and copy and paste this. I'm gonna go back in and re-get my copy link address. Anyway, back to our instance. The first thing we need to do is actually see what's inside of our instance. So we're gonna go ahead and use the ls command, which just stands for list, and it lists all the files and directories for us. Green means it's executable. So you can see we have install, install, and run. These are actions we can do. If it's blue, we can think of that as openable. It's a directory. And so this is the one we're wanting to use, the comfy UI. So we're gonna go ahead and type in CD, which means change directory, and then comfy UI. If you go ahead and start typing the first few letters and then click tab, it'll auto complete for you in the terminal. Now they're in the comfy UI folder, let's run LS one more time. And we can see there is a lot of files and folders here. The one we're wanting though is gonna be this models folder right here. We're gonna go ahead and type in CD models and then we're gonna ls one more time. These are gonna be all of our model categories and folders. This is why it was important earlier that we knew exactly what type of model we're using. And since ours is Allura, 
we're going to go ahead and, you guessed it, CD into Laura's. Now that we're here, we can go ahead and LS and see what's inside. All that there is currently is put Laura's here, which is exactly what we'll do. We'll do this by typing in wget, and then we're going to go ahead and paste in our download link. And then click, and click enter to install. Now, for some of you, um, you may not have to do this, but for me, on my computer, I have to do shift plus the paste command. So if it isn't pasting for you properly in your terminal, go ahead and give that a try. Once this is done, we can go ahead and type ls, and we can see it did go ahead and get copied over. But note, it was saved as 177492. This is because earlier in our link, we said we're going to download from models this, is this model number. So we can go ahead and rename it now. And we'll do that using the MV command, which stands for move. Which I know doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but bear with me. We're going to put MV and then the old file name, so 177492. And you can go ahead and put in the new name for what you want to call it. I'm going to go ahead and then just copy in what the actual model file name is, but you can actually name it whatever you'd like if it makes it easier for you. Just make sure it ends in this dot save tensors and enter. If we ls one more time, we can confirm that we did it properly. And that's it. Once that's done, we either can run SDXL and ComfyUI from our terminal or from the launch SDXL button. But since we're ready here, I'm just going to go ahead and continue with the steps to launch from the terminal. So the first thing we're going to need to do is actually get out of all of our folders. You can go ahead and do cd dot dot, and it'll go ahead and take you back one folder and so on and so forth. But if you noticed, we have a little tilde here, which is our home directory. So if we just do cd and the tilde, we get to go home. Nice, right? And then from here, we're just going to go ahead and then follow these steps on the left hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and run install sdxl. And this may take about a minute or more, so just wait a little bit. And now that Stable Diffusion is installed, all that's left to do is go ahead and run it. And so we're going to do that with the run command. And that's it. Our server has started. And you can see it says to see the GUI, go to blah, 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 8188. But we're going to go ahead and just click the local host link here that's on our instance detail page. And we are now looking at whoop, Comfy UI. How perfect. I'm going to go ahead and clear because it went ahead and loaded up an old workflow. And you guys know me, I always love starting from a blank slate. So the first thing we need to do though for this workflow is grab our load checkpoint node. And then normally, when we drag out our clip output, we connect it to usually a clip text encode for our prompts. But today we'll be using a new node called clip set last layer. This node, as the name would imply, sets the last layer available for diffusion. That's what it means when it says stop at clip layer. And you see this node counts from the end. So negative one actually means the last layer, essentially meaning we'll be using the entire model skipping over nothing. This node, then connects to our lower loader, which goes ahead and loads in our recently installed model, just like that. And again, this is why it's important to know exactly which folder you're putting it into, or else the lower folder, or else the load lower node would not be able to look and find it because it wouldn't be in the lower folder. And from there, this is actually where we grab our text prompts. So clip text and code, and this one is going to be my positive prompt, so I'm going to color it now. And then this one is my negative. These get connected to our case sampler directly. And then we go ahead and we chain actually these models. So we're going to go ahead and take the SDXL base model, connect that to our LoRa, and then gets connected to our case sampler, which takes both in. We then need an empty latent image node. And since we are using SDXL, we can change these values from 512 to 1024 by 1024. 
We could then change our batch size from one to four. And then lastly, we're gonna go ahead and grab a VAE decoder and then a preview image node. Just like that. We can make sure it connects to our VAE, which is a long ways away. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use the reroute node, which just keeps it a little bit cleaner. So sometimes you can do this if you don't like it crossing around so much. I don't do it too often unless it's like a little far ways away. Anyway, that's it. We're now ready for our, pop, our prompts, but we do need to be specific with this model. So I'll go ahead and add the recommended prompt necessities in the description below. But for our positive prompt, we need to make sure we include the words logo and then logo red AF. Oh, I typed logo wrong. And then logo red AF. And this just correlates to our model and so just makes it it ensures our model works effectively. And after this, we can go ahead and add in what our desired logo description is. And for this first one, I want to make a logo for a running shoe company. I want it to be a sneaker with wings and I want to have vibrant colors. I'm going to specify again that I want a shoe with wings And then I want shoe. And then now for our negative prompt. I don't want any bad art. It can't be ugly, of course. It can't be deformed. I don't want any watermarks or duplicates. And then since I did say wings in my positive prompt, I'm gonna go ahead and just add in the word bird or birds just because I want to make sure that wings to bird is not a jump the AI would make because it feels like a likely jump for me. And that's it. Let's go ahead and click Q prompt and see what our first batch gets us. And just a reminder, again, when you make more than one, it does take a little bit longer because we're applying this four different times to four different empty latent images. I'm excited though. Ooh. See, we did get a bird. I knew there'd be at least there I knew there'd be a bird somewhere, somehow. But honestly, these aren't bad at all. These are quite great. Alright. Yeah, I'm very happy. I don't know which one I like better. I don't think I like that one. <laughs> Alright, but let's move on. Let's see what happens if we go ahead and make one a logo for a bakery company instead i want a bakery i want it to be named heavenly bread cut it's gonna have halos and warm calming colors and of course, a loaf of bread, duh. And then I'm just gonna remove this birds and bird from our negative because this shouldn't apply. All right, and let's go ahead and click Q prompt. And quick disclaimer, I came up with Heavenly Bread Co. in my noggin, my very own noggin. So if this is a real bakery, I would like to apologize. Please don't sue me. And if it's not a real bakery, don't steal my idea. Or if you do, let me know and like we can work out a deal. There could be some money involved, you know. Ooh. I really do like that. That's pretty. The AI isn't do too well with words as what I've come to notice. It does try. It does look close to English, but not quite. So let's go ahead and add text to our negative prompts. And see what we get this time. All right, I think that's better. Ooh, this is a new take. 
I actually do like that. So we have a lot of options that we actually do like and enjoy. And now normally you could go ahead and just save image and it would save it for you as a PNG. But normally PNGs don't have a background. So thankfully we have a solution for that. If we go ahead and go to our manager to install custom nodes, we can go ahead and look up REMBG, which stands for remove background. Let's go ahead and install this first node here, which just goes ahead and gives us the image remove background node. Now that it's installed, we're gonna go ahead and just click restart. And let's go ahead and refresh just to be safe. Perfect. Let's go ahead and then add our node in. It's gonna go ahead and be between the VAD code and our preview image. And if we want, we can actually leave this preview image so we can see what it looks like with the background. Search node, we're gonna look up, oops. I would if it let me. We're gonna look up remove background. Perfect. Like so, and I'm gonna attach one more preview image. So we should get one with the background and one without. And unfortunately with this specific node, it only works if we have a batch size of one. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that. And let's try that again. Again, I did like our vibe, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring that to fixed. And let's see what we get for the second round. See? So it did remove the background for us and still kept that inner circle. I'm still not okay with this one though. I'm gonna try and see if I can get it to give me a better one. Increment and see if it gets me a better one this time around. Much better. I now have a loco for my heavenly bakery and now you all know how to create logos for whatever business endeavors you may have, as well as how to install custom models through SH on Compute Grid. And personally, I truly cannot wait to see all of your entrepreneurial ideas come to life. Thank you all for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more AI Simplified with Compute Grid.